Greetings, creatives, and welcome back to the Nomen live stream. I already see some folks jumping in on the chat, so welcome. Um, those of you who might be unfamiliar with Nomen, uh, just right off the top, we are essentially a 3D art school located in Hollywood, California, and we specialize in training artists for careers in games, uh, animation, and visual effects. Uh, what you just saw in the reel um, before uh, I came on the screen was actually our campus in Hollywood. It's an incredibly cool place. And uh, I'm mentioning that because I'm excited to say that we just announced that campus will be open again starting in the fall. And um, you know that means you can come out and take a look. You can check out the, the Sculpture Lab and see what Nomen's all about. So definitely invite you to do that. I'm joined in the chat today by one of my colleagues um, who will be able to answer questions about Nomen should you have any of those. Um, so with that housekeeping out of the way, um, my name is Adam Hartzell. I'm your host. Um, I work as a Nomen rep, uh, which means I get to talk to really cool artists about really cool things and what Nomen is doing. And uh, I have the great pleasure today of getting to speak with um, costume concept artist Gina Di Domenico Flanagan. And uh, she's worked on some incredible projects. Um, just by way of introduction, I'd like to read you a little bit of her bio and we're gonna take a look at her reel and then welcome Gina to the stream. If you happen to be in need of closed captioning, that's gonna be available on our Facebook live stream. So definitely go over there and check that out. My colleague's gonna drop a link in the chat uh, if you need to head over there to see that. So Gina Dinamon, <laughs> excuse me guys, D. Domenico Flanagan is one of the industry's most prolific costume concept artists. Having worked on blockbuster films such as A Star is Born, Hateful Eight, Django Unchained, uh, The Magnificent Seven, The Help, Jumanji, and Pitch Perfect. She's also worked on popular television shows such as The Boys, Titans, uh, American Horror Story, Preacher, Grace and Frankie, and For All Mankind. Uh, beyond film and TV, Gina has lent her talents to stars like John Legend, uh, Lionel Richie, Madonna, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Barry Manilow, illustrating costumes for their various tours. So Gina started her career in the industry after graduating from Parsons School of Design in New York, uh, where she was awarded the Bob Mackey Gold Thimble Award for her achievements. Following graduation, Gina began as a fashion designer assistant, which eventually led her to a movie set where she discovered costume illustration for film and television. Um, even in her pre-digital years, Gina was considered the industry's top illustrator, working for Oscar award-winning designer Ruth Carter on projects such as Malcolm X, Amistad, as well as being the go-to illustrator for fan favorites such as Star Trek First Contact, Galaxy Quest, and Escape from LA. And Gina then left the industry for 10 years to raise her three daughters. And today, Gina is a regular concept artist for the DC streaming universe, working on five shows simultaneously. She also lends her skills to UCLA, teaching classes on illustration and digital illustration. She attends the San Diego Comic-Con annually and speaks on panels discussing concept artistry and suit design for superhero characters. So with that, we're gonna roll a one minute reel. You can see some of the cool stuff that Gina has worked on in her career and we're gonna welcome her to the stream. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm very thankful. Very awesome. So Gina, welcome to the stream. It's wonderful to have you here today. Thank you. Hi, Adam. You were, you were talking about me. I just, I got exhausted. I was so <laughs> tired. I was like, oh, now I know why I'm so tired. <laughs> oh my. Well, um, no, you've worked on some really incredible stuff um, and it's really a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. I've been Excellent. doing this for a long, I mean, I realize, you know, as you're talking, I've been doing this for so long. 
it's it's it doesn't feel like it. It feels like a minute because I love what I do. But um, that's great. Yeah, it's been a really long time. Yeah, days will go by. Like I'll I'll wake up, I'll start illustrating, and then it'll be dark. And like what happened? So <laughs> I feel really lucky. I found something that I'm that I love to do. That time just flies. I, that's the cool thing about a creative career. It's always yeah. it's, there's always something new. It's always keeping you interested. Mm -hmm. um, so um, you're going to be. Uh, sharing with us a bit today some of your process i know that you recently did a noman workshop mm -hmm. um you know essentially a, a demonstration slash slash course on the noman workshop right. um which is is a great online resource um including many many other top industry artists such as gina if you guys want to check that out um right. so i think you're going to be showing us a little bit of your process you're going to be talking about what costume concept art is because i think a lot of people think of co uh, concept art as a particular generalization, but costume concept is its own niche and it serves a particular purpose within the industry. So I think that is particularly interested, interesting to artists that like working on characters, but maybe also have a mind towards cosplay, costuming, and those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say and um, I'll kind of hand the mic to you. I'm gonna jump in the sidecar and nerd out on what you're showing us. I'll bring in questions from the chat. So guys, please, Feel free to type your questions in the chat. We'll do our best to get to them. So what I'm going to show you, though, um, the the illustration I did for the current one for no, the Noman Workshop is the Borg Queen. It's more like fan art than it is costume concept. I mean, the end result is the same, but the sure. process is a little bit different. So mm -hmm. I'll show you both, like when I'm working with a designer and then when I'm, I'm doing a piece like I did for the Noman, we're just going to we'll go through it. Yeah, um, great. So, so it's just a little bit different because I wasn't and, working with anybody. And that being said, even though what you're about to show is technically a fan piece, you actually did design the costuming for the Borg Queen. Uh, Deborah contact. Everton was the designer on uh, First Contact and I, mm -hmm. I was the concept artist. So I worked awesome. with her and it, the process was very different then than it is now. 100% traditional, right? Yeah, the awesome. paper, we had okay. one chance to do it and uh, and and then we'd have to start all over to do another one. So yeah, things changed a little bit when I was having children. Okay, <laughs> this cool. The industry changed a tiny bit. <laughs> well, we're all really excited to to see what you've got to show us. Okay, okay. So um, now, uh, since Philip Boutet told me I had to do it, I start uh, in Daz to get my pose, um, or a couple poses. So Daz is, is like Pandora's box. There's so much that can be done in Daz, but really I only know how to get in, grab a pose and get out. So 3D terrifies me. Um, I, I'm trying to learn ZBrush and I know I have to learn ZBrush, but um, I know I had to do this because of what Philip was creating and how hard it was for us to find poses um, in costume illustration, you, you have to have, find a front and a back and they have to match. So once I figured out how to get in and get out of Daz, um, that my life became really easy instead of yeah. searching the internet for a front and back that matched. And well, if you don't mind, I'm resume. glad you brought that up. If you don't mind the aside really quick, um, because I think for a lot of artists out there who usually start in 2D, um, yeah. doing 2D illustration, 3D can be very intimidating. And it, yes. can, it can feel so foreign, so different. Um, so I love the fact that you know if, if you're watching and you're out there and you're doing yeah. characters in 2D, um, you know I think you're in good company with Gina because here's someone who is has has crossed over into that realm and is going to show us something that actually is is simple enough to approach and is a great introduction uh, I think right. for 2D artists into 3D. So now, and Daz is also free, but you can buy things. There are a couple things that I did buy. Of course, once you start buying things, it's like candy. You want to <laughs> become a collector, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it comes with a lot of free everything. And mm -hmm. so basically, I'm going to put in a, a Genesis 8 pose. I'm going to open with that. And mm -hmm. then I go to poses. Now, this is where you can um, buy a lot or or just go with the basics. Like some of these are basic. This one I purchased. And so, um, cause I want, you know, cause I wanted, I wanted this alien, this, this fallen angel body. And so with yeah. her came, but, but again, there's basic ones. Okay. So I loved this one. I made just some minor adjustments to it. 
when I did the Alien Queen, but you can see um, how easy it is to move around, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and you can also easily repose, right? So mm -hmm. you just get in and you start playing. And then- yeah, It's almost like working with an action figure. Yeah, you make a mistake, you go back, super easy, right? So now when, when, it, when I finally chose it, then I went over here to the shaping and I gave her a little more of an alien, an alien body. Now there's, there's way more I can do, um, but like, I mean, look at this, it's so cool. You can, the bodybuilder's body, or that was the geo body, there's, there's all these other bodies. There's then, then this is what comes with it. So you, it's just super fun to play, right? Yeah. So you, you get the character that you want, and then you just render it. Once you render it, like, okay, do I want, I, do I want to look up at her? Mm -hmm. Do I want her looking right at me? Now, another thing about costume illustration is that you can't, I can't show images like this. I have to show them. You have to be able to see every part of the costume because when my drawings aren't, my drawings are not only to sell the design to the producer and the director and the showrunner and wow everybody, but they're also, that same drawing goes to the workroom and the workroom has to mm -hmm. be able to see everything. They need to see every seam line and know exactly how to build it. So I have to, I have to create a wow and I have to be really communicative. So no like, for shortening, you have to see both arms, you have to see both sides. Um, so it's important that I, I, I only, I not only communicate to the workroom, but I make it look cool. So yeah. this is where I want it. I've got it shaped the way I want it. I render it and then I move on. So um, we're gonna, I'm gonna take you out of Daz now, okay? So once it's rendered, it's rendered. And now there's so much more. You could put scenes in the background, you can light it all the, differently. But I haven't learned to do all that. This is all I've learned how to do. And every day I say to myself, okay, take a tutorial today, do a tutorial, but I never have time. Okay, we're gonna get out of here. And we're gonna go over to my Photoshop. Okay, so um, this is, I'm just gonna take you quickly through the Alien Queen. And if you Sounds have any great. questions. Yeah. Them. So I start with a background. Of course, I've, I've built the background. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to teach you guys, of course, this today. I'm just going to kind of show you my process. Absolutely. And and I think also, you know, for clarification for our audience, this isn't necessarily a demo as much as it is a show and tell, um, but there is a full featured uh, tutorial, a full featured workshop by Gina on the Nomen workshop. If what you're seeing, you're like, wow, I'd love to learn to do that. I already have Photoshop. I can get Daz for free. Definitely go check that out. Yeah, you can completely, I'll take you through the actual process step by step. To, awesome. to create her. Um, okay, so I, of course, I search everywhere. I bring in the cables. I hate doing it this way. It's like, there are the cables, but no, the cables, <laughs> like I had to like find them. You had, had to work for it, yeah. I had to color <laughs> them and I had the cables. And then, and now honestly though, I don't put in my background first. My background does go in last, but it's, it's just gonna look better on it on this kind of background. Okay, so here is my original artwork mm -hmm. from um, from um, First Contact. This this was the fine this was the final this one and this one here was one of the rejects, but I wanted to use it as reference cuz I I don't have these drawings anymore. Look how blurry uh, this is. Like the designer has them and I think they were destroyed. I don't think the originals exist. So I just have these really bad blurry uh, versions, but I still was able to use it um, for reference to reference, like building her. Um, and this is all, what we're looking at here was all done traditionally in the nineties, right? Yeah, this is, this is all yeah. paint, which is why we only had scans. So we've got, we had scans of these and then um, those scans were destroyed in the original. Well, the scans look like this and the originals mm -hmm. I don't think exist anymore oh, so I, I always have my reference material this one on the bottom right is it too small should I make it bigger um, um, you can I mean I can I can definitely make it out um, yeah this one was um, our department gave me this because this was how we knew she was going to be brought into the scene that she was going to attach this way so this is um, 
this is, I get information, like I'll get backgrounds and I'll get um, drawings like this from other departments that are working on the same character. And so I have to make sure I refer to all these kinds of things um, when I do concept art. I spoke, you know, the designer knew, you know, we were gonna have to, you'll see her neckline comes in and, and it, it, everything has to go together. Like mm -hmm. we all have to work together. So um, this is where that DAS pose comes in. Mm -hmm. So I bring in the DAS pose. I gave it the color I wanted to give it. I black out part of it. Um, and then here are her sh shoes I put on. And then I build her face. And that goes on next. And then these are all the tendons, which I referred to, I referred to this because knowing um, how the, I, that I was inspired by the human body when I illustrated her costume, mm -hmm. 90s, um, I, I, I wanted to refer to all, all these tendons. So I had this image. You have any questions? I'm going through this so fast. Um, I, we've had a question coming, which we'll get, I think we'll get to in okay. just a little bit about a transition from traditional to digital, which I think is a great oh, topic. Uh, yeah. Love. Okay. Then I bring in the piping and what I did was I just went online and just grabbed a ton of pipes, brought them in and decided how I wanted to fit them onto her. Um, and then brought in her neckline and as you can see we knowing how how this was this was going to attach we like mm -hmm. followed somewhat this neckline right and then brought in the hooks pulling of the skin which was just a piece of fabric as you can oh, see oh wow right? yeah it's just a piece of fabric and, and you put it over the skin um, and then you put, um, you do a, a blend mode so mm -hmm. that it, it looks like it's just part of the skin. These little tricks. Skin texture, because she doesn't have, she has some sun damage, you know. <laughs> uh, then I painted in suit color. Some smoke in the behind her. Mm -hmm. Let's get rid of the reference material now. And then I take a, a gray version of her. So I'll merge her together. I'll create a copy. I'll make it gray. And then I'll put a blend mode on it. So this is, you can see the difference between mm -hmm. before and after kind of ties all the values yeah. together yeah it just it just gives it look at how much depth it gives it and you can take yeah. it through all sorts of different blend modes and decide which one you want and then mm -hmm. i got rid of a little bit of it um then smoke in front doubled it and then this last one i do my friend greg hopwood taught me to do is you you fill with black, put it on color dodge, and then you and then you use a brush and paint over the top, and it gives you this cool lighting effect mm -hmm. on everything. And then what do we have here? Is this the oh yeah the title title sequence? And then sometimes I'll flip it so that I can see mistakes. And and mm -hmm. um, it's really smart to flip it as you go because you can see that she's topping falling over or that her eye is too high or too low, or you can see all the flaws if you keep flipping it back and forth. Yeah, I think our eyes just become so used to what we're looking at that we, we lose that. We do. Um, unless we flip it, yeah. We do. So that takes you through the board queen without, without like it just appeared. It didn't take- with, with all, Without all the work. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really awesome, though. I remember when I first started learning how to create art digitally and learning digital paintings, um, sometimes the tutorials just didn't break down for me like this is how it all stacks up. 
you just see somebody making something and it's like, I, but I don't know how to do that. So this is really cool to see. Um, oh, no, that was, wasn't that torture that was like, and now this, and now this. It's like, <laughs> no, like, there's like four hours in between each Sure, song. but I love <laughs> I love seeing the breakdown of the layers like that um, because, you know, digital art is sort of a combination of a traditional approach with using the tool sets that it provides you and those overlays and, and all the stuff that you talked about. So it's really cool to see that. Right, and this is like nothing. I mean, in terms of, I'll watch another artist you know, create their artwork and they've got a whole nother way and so many different tricks and it's overwhelming. It's, it's, I find it like, oh my God, okay, I'm still, okay, I'm still working. I can't compare myself because then I'll just start freaking out, you know, because I'm not doing it that way. And I didn't know how to do that. And oh my God, you know. I, I think you're very humble. Um, and I, I think you also are bringing up something really important is that I talk to a lot of younger artists a lot and they bring up questions like about imposter syndrome and struggling oh. with comparing yourself to other people. And I also talk to a lot of professionals and most professionals say, you know, that doesn't go away. It's not like you yeah. feel like you've suddenly arrived somewhere. You have to continue being a learner and growing and, and working on your, you know, what you do. That's right, you, you've never arrived ever, ever. And if you think you have, you're already a dinosaur. So <laughs> I'm, I'm so behind, every day I wake up, I'm super behind. I don't know, I, I, I there's so much I still need to learn. Just updates are enough to make you crazy. The, oh, but sure. every, yeah. every day I feel like I'm behind and I feel like an imposter. Well, but, and I, but I think you can also flip that script and say that there's a difference between just knowing every single technical trick and mm -hmm. understanding what it is you're doing. I mean, you, I'm sure that you, no artist gets hired for, well, do you know all the tricks they get hired for? Do you understand the process? Do you understand what we're doing with the principles behind this? Right. Right. And like for a perfect example is brushes. Like I literally use one brush. So all of this was done with the first, the number one brush that they gave that comes with Photoshop. Well, I hear artists talking about, oh, did you buy that brush package? And you do that brush package and that one and that one. I'm like, oh, am I supposed to be using all this? You, you should just release the, the Gina brush pack and it's one brush. <laughs> like people, <laughs> you just market that pack and people download it. They're so excited. It's like, this is just one brush. It's all you $200. need. But it's true. It's true. I mean, one of the best advice that was given to me when I was painting digitally was limit yourself to one brush. Don't don't get distracted. You know, learn how to paint first, uh -huh. and then discover what the different textures can do for you and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Or um, not. It's been five sure. years. I've been painting digitally. And well, I've what you're doing is working. So that's <laughs> that's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. So we've we've had a few questions come in uh, yeah. during the course, and I think some of them it's it's a good opportunity to get to. Others, I know that you've got some more stuff to show us. So I might leave it in context for that. But um, yeah, the first question was sorry. You let me know when you want me to show you the. Oh, other. sure thing. Uh, the first question was, you know, how is a transition from traditional to digital for you, and how do you see that it has impacted um, costume uh, concept design? Um. Oh, the, I know that it could be an entire stream unto itself. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the transition was not easy. Um, when I, I had my children and I, I came back to the industry because I had to, I had to go back to work uh, to be able to raise my children. So there was a, there was a, an intensity and fear and um, a necessity. I didn't have a choice to say, I can't do this. Um, so that I needed to be able to make the transition. Otherwise, I don't think I would have done it. It is so foreign to go from paint and paper to digital. But once I made the jump, um, I couldn't imagine going back. It mm. is so archaic. I mean, the, the one thing I really do miss is you end up with a piece of artwork that we don't have now. Like I, I have really cool things I can frame that have beautiful line quality and chunks of paint and, and you just wanna look at them and you wanna frame them and they're so beautiful, but they really are not, you can't email them and scanning them changes colors, it's a nightmare. And then just the fact that, that I can change the color 50 times in 50 seconds Mm -hmm. Whereas before I'd have to start all over again. It is it is such an incredible tool and not only for artists, but not only that, 
we can work from home. We can work from anywhere in the world. We, we, it's created freedom and, and, a bit, and an, just an ability to be really good at what we do and, and to be really successful. So, you know, I'm, I'm an advocate for digital um, art and illustrating digitally and Wacom. And I, I just couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine doing it the way I used to do it. But the transition's hard. Sometimes there's not exactly a class that that teaches you exactly what you need to know. And you just need to take a whole bunch of classes. And then what I did was I found someone, Patrick Rodriguez, who is a, a previs artist. And he was able to show me exactly what I needed to do to work as a costume concept artist. Because I told him, he, he knew, knows Photoshop inside and out. So I, I showed him an illustration said, you've got to get me here. And he did, he did. It's not what he does, but he knows it so well. So I took private lessons for a year with him. And then I started working. It was, it was a bumpy road to start working, but I started working. Were there any, um, just kind of sort of finish off the question, were there any particular aha moments that you can remember where, you know, you, you, you realized, oh, I, I, I suddenly get it. Like you kind of had a revelation or like when it sort of dropped into place of being like, oh, I feel like I can do this now. Or was it more just accumulative over time? It was cumulative. I'm sorry. I wish that I had an No, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's about par for the course, you know? No, it was cumulative because I even still feel like, like when I was in the office with Greg Hopwood, he'd, he'd be over there doing the coolest stuff and I'd be like, oh, Oh no, I'm still not there. And that was last year. I still haven't got it. You know, I haven't figured this out yet. Because, yeah, so sometimes, like he would always say, Oh, you got to look at this person's artwork. It's so amazing and it inspires me. And, da -da -da. and I'd be like, No, I, I can't. I can't look. <laughs> I can't look. I'm afraid sure. I'm going to freeze if I look at that person's yeah. artwork. Oh, well, we've all been there. I'm yeah. So ready. <laughs> yeah. So I'm torn between being inspired by someone else and being absolutely frozen by other people's work. Mm -hmm. um, but did I, did I answer the question? I got a hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, super helpful. And I think, you know, the, the takeaways in that are, you know, anything that is going to be a benefit to you as an artist, anything that is worth learning is going to require drive to learn. There's no magic wands. There's oh. no silver bullet, you know, that, that turns you into a great artist. And I think that one of the things, one of the subjects we deal a lot with on this stream is kind of how um, the idea of talent has got blown up too much. Um, it, people see an artist and they look at the word, go, you're so talented. But the artist is thinking, no, I just worked really, really, really hard, really hard. Yeah. <laughs> to make this, you know. And another thing really important in terms of being successful is it's, you could be incredibly talented, but you could also be someone no one wants to be around. Sure. So. I don't, when, when I bring in like people that work with me, it's not the most talented person that I bring in. It's the person that is fun and has a great disposition and works really hard and mm. is always positive. And, you know, cause all of that's how you become successful by being well-rounded that way. You don't have to worry about someone being more talented because they might not get the job, even if they're way better artists than you or, you know, better at anything. They might not get mm -hmm. the job because the person hiring wants you because of you and your spirit. So that's a big part of it, you know? Yeah, it's, it's super good advice too, um, mm -hmm. to, to not neglect the soft skills. Um, mm -hmm. well, I know that you've got more to show us. So I don't wanna, I okay. don't wanna hold you up. Okay, so so this, now this is a really short version of, of a process, but so when I work with a designer, mm -hmm. um, I, we first start with um, the research and um, Jenny at work always does all our research for us. And so she'll give me, this was Ravager. She'll give me all this research on Ravager in, in the comics and then um, images of where the designer wants to push the character. So I'll get, I'll, and they could have, they could be high fashion images. So, but I'll see, Okay, mm -hmm. I get it. We're going shiny and we're going shoulder pads and we're going a lot of skin or whatever it is. So I'll see what the designer wants and then I'll see all the original research for the character. And we usually have to find a middle ground. It's my job to find the middle ground. Mm -hmm. and put all the elements together of the original character, 
to because you have to appease the fans. The, the fans, if the fans are pissed, like you failed. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. And I know because I'm a fan. So, mm -hmm. so I know how they feel and I'm really pig headed about it. Um, so, so wait, you're taking us, you're, we're going inside the studio with you now, essentially. This is the process. This is kind a of. brief example of the process that you use. A very short version. Yeah. Of okay. the process that I use. So I look at the research now. I know, and I, and I research who the character is. Is she a bat or he? You know, badass, uh, uh, shy, um, um, insecure, whatever it is, because that affects the pose. Mm -hmm. So not only does the pose has to be frontal, mostly, but it has to it has to embody the character. And yeah. even in 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 a shadow form, it has to embody a character. Right. So, so this girl that you're looking at right here, she's powerful. She's not shy. Mm -hmm. She's standing, you know, strong. And, and so I will show three poses and it used to be like this. Um, but it, it was not, not in shadow. I shadowed them out because they were nudes and it's not, we don't want to show nudes. So, um, <laughs> um, I'll show the designer three poses and that I think are strong and the designer will choose one. And so once the, the it's chosen, then I put all the information together. I know that this, mm -hmm. this is a bit further than the first step, but if you- Can you blow that up just a little bit? Yeah, sorry, sorry for interrupting. If you look closely, it, it is sketchy. It is, it mm -hmm. is very, it, it's not, they're, they're not, I mean, as you can see my lines are, are just, I just, I punch these out really fast mm -hmm. once I, I kind of have an idea of where we're going. Um, I probably showed her just black, just um, a, a gray body with some lines in it first, uh, the designer. And then this was, this is more like second step. We're, we're a little more in depth, but I will come up with as many of these as I have to. I'll do go days of just creating versions like this. So, so this, this is the beginning of the design process. And you can, oh, so you can see she's already, we've already had a round here where she said top, take the top of seven, put it mm -hmm. on, take the belt of eight, put it on the bottom of seven and then, you know, boot of eight. So sh what she's doing after I make probably 40 or 50 of these is she'll pick her favorite pieces and mm -hmm. we'll put them together. Now this is, this is specifically working with Laura Jean Chan and every designer you work with has a different process. So this process is Laura Jean. So then we'll get close and we, I always work in value. I do not put any color in, in the beginning because color is distracting and mm -hmm. color can also cover up good or bad design. So I never put in color and I never put a background in when I begin. It's, it's too distracting. So I will do things like this and then um, I will also, uh, do research on how this whole thing's going to work, like with her, her knife and, and the, the sheath and everything. And so I'll give choices on this and I'll show pictures of what can be purchased or what has been built. Um, I will do mask studies. How's this? And, and these were all masks that were inspired by the comic book. Like I would never do a number four if I didn't see it in the comic book. Mm -hmm. And and I put a twist on it. There's a little something that's fresh, but um, it still is inspired by what I did see in 1974 in that one comic book, you know? So nothing's ever out of the blue. Um, I will, after the, after I get this far, then special effects will, once it's chosen. So this top left one was chosen, right? So like mm -hmm. I told you guys before, how our artwork is a map for special effects. So now this is the guy who is, is actually creating the mask. This is a first pass for him on, on um, print. It's usually 3D printed. Mm -hmm. this, this was 3D printed. So then now this on the right has to get approved and they're using my, my sketches, right? Now, the other illustrator, Greg, that I work with, he is proficient in ZBrush, so he would probably sculpt it, whereas I just drew it. Mm -hmm. But we got we got to the same place. 
he'd, he'd probably sculpt it and show them a, a, his sculpt and then maybe they'll have less work to do, but maybe not. I don't, I don't. Okay. So um, then I have to do like, what is this armor? I have to do patterns, right? Mm -hmm. this, this armor is actually um, uh, printed on fabric. It's 3D, it's, it's printed so it's raised. So it has the 3D effect. So I have to figure out all this kind of stuff too, which is, I had to learn, learn how to do it. It's not hard. It's just, it's amazing how you can Google everything, how to make patterns, love everything. And then the final result is, I think you guys saw this, is yeah. it's after, and you guys saw how I got that lighting and how it mm -hmm. just builds upon itself. And then we have a final design, but it's gone through a lot of process of all those gray drawings will get down to two or three and it'll go to the higher ups. And then they'll approve one or two of them and then we'll put a little bit of color on it. They'll approve one and it'll go people above that. So it's mm -hmm. like, it goes to the producers and then it goes to HBO. So there's all these chains of command that have to approve everything. And, and so basically it starts with a huge pool of, of concepts and ideas, and then it, it gets down to it. And sometimes it'll go all the way to the top and they'll say no, and we start all over again. So some, somebody will say, hey, how long does it take you to do a drawing? Like, well, a week or six months, you yeah. know, it, it depends. Like I can work on the same character for literally six months. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I, I, I think you're painting a great picture here, pardon the pun. Um, but I, that's why you hear all the time. One of the top things that you hear professionals say about what does it take to work in the industry? They all talk about being a team player oh. because it is not you holed up in some studio somewhere working as an individual doing your craft. You are a part of an ecosystem and you've got to work together with that whole process. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is, it is a complete team effort because when this leaves me and the designer looks, it has to control every department and make sure that her or his vision is on track. It's like keeping a train going down or, uh, you know, so now it goes to, to the, to the team that figures out where the fabric, what all these fabrics are and making the fabrics mm -hmm. that I did that cool print. They now have to get samples of each of those fabrics and, and control that. And what, what's the base fabric and what colors are going to go on top. And, and then special effects CCE we work with does all the hard pieces. So now they're coming into the fittings with all the hard pieces. So, and they're putting their design element on it with the mm -hmm. designer overseeing that. So it's, it's, it's such a team effort. Yeah. And there is no mine, mine, mine. It's we and ours. And, and then once the costume is gone out of done, then it's the lighting, right? Cinematography, yeah. lighting, they can make it look great and they can make it look terrible. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's, it's, the, a massive group effort and it's really it but it's really fun it sounds fun it's it sounds great. awesome we definitely um, don't work in a vacuum yeah you're inspiring a lot of questions so i think we can we can jump into some of those uh because this people want to know some stuff here unless there was something more you wanted to get to before we go to that no okay cool um all right so let's see here uh Someone's wondering, and I know that this this is a tough question because it's like asking which of your children is your favorite. Do you have a DC Comics costume that uh, is one of your favorites you've worked on so far? Or maybe we could change that and say that one of the funnest experiences. Oh, see, this is where the I love my job comes in. Right. No, I love them all. It. Yeah, I guess yeah. The, the, my mother-in-law always said my favorite child is the one I'm with. So I guess that 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 applies here. Whatever I'm working on is my favorite. Yeah. Honestly, Which, of course, you can't tell us about right now. <laughs> Some of them come out better than others. Mm -hmm. But if you if, but that's also a big kiss of death for an artist. If you're halfway through a drawing and you think this is great. Oh, yeah. Forget it. You're done. Yeah, you start. Yeah, it's almost like you start believing your own hype. And then uh, yeah. you develop all these blind spots. Yeah. I had a teacher yeah. that would be like, you look like you really like this drawing. And I'm like, yeah, mm. halfway through. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And I remember starting to feel like, okay, I've got to do the legs still. The uppers look so cool. And he'd take it and rip it right in front of me and just throw it on the ground. Wow. I'm like, oh, 
okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get it. I totally get it. If that's you, some tough yeah. love. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's rough. <laughs> Maybe that's the, another advantage of digital. They can't do that. They can't take it and rip it in half in front this of you. This is true. This is true. And you can go back, 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 back. Oh, ooh, yeah. it's so funny. Yeah. I'm on, I'm in Photoshop so much with the command Z that I was organizing my garage the other day and I'm looking at the shelves and I'm thinking, you know, that has to go back down there. And I was thinking command Z command. I'm like, Oh, I'm in Photoshop too long. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be drawing in my sketchbook and my, my left hand will twitch. Like I'm trying to go backwards and I'm like, Oh, I can't do that. Um, <laughs> right. There's this thing called an eraser. Um, but okay. Uh, so another question, um, let, okay. So this is an interesting one because I think, you know, as you shared earlier, you're in, you're finding yourself, um, in a little bit of liminal space, um, which I think artists are, we kind of live there all the time. Artists are always in liminal space. There's always flux, there's always change, uh, growth and movement. Um, so as someone who is moving towards 3D because you're seeing the necessity of that, um, how do you see, why, why, does that, why is that important to you? I think you mentioned things like turnarounds, um, but uh, let's see. What, I, what, I, what limitations do you find that you might bump up against in your processes without some of the 3D tools, if we can ask that? Yeah, um, I think I would be more valuable and I would get a higher rate if I knew 3D. So if I was not, if I was younger, I mean, right now I'm thinking ah, I might, you know, maybe, maybe I won't do it because I'm already kind of like in the end of my career, not the beginning of my career. If it was the beginning of my career, there's no question. It's mm. all 3D. And and even virtual. And that that the virtual thing tears me up. Tears not tears terrifies me. But um if I was the beginning of my in my career, I can tell you all right now, 3D is the future. So mm. get on that train fast and and for me, I feel like I really need to learn it, but there's that I don't have to. I'm so busy, I don't have to. And until I have, yeah, to, you have a well-established career. Yeah, because it's hard for me. My, I'm old. It's it doesn't make sense to me. You know the way, the way the interface for ZBrush doesn't. It looks none of the words make any sense to me. So, so I wasn't born and raised with it. I was tactile comic books. I. I wasn't born and raised with it. So I, I'm having a really hard time with it, but I can tell you right now that if it was life or death, I'd learn really fast and I'd right. have it down probably in a couple months. Mm -hmm. And Gina, you're young. I don't, I don't <laughs> think, I don't think anyone who makes the kind of cool stuff that you make oh. can say I'm old. No, that, that doesn't, yeah. that doesn't track. Um, so uh, someone else is wanting to know what of, we've got a fan of the boys in the chat and they're wanting yeah. to know what of the super suits for the boys did you get to work on? All of them. Oh, I did all the boys, the first two seasons. Awesome. Uh, they were fun. It was, it was, we got to make larger than life in a in kind of a goofy way, you mm -hmm. know, these, these suits. They were, they're just, they're just a little bit off. You know, a little mm -hmm. bit too me, me, me. And that was fun to do. Which, and it was super fun to watch. Like, I remember when I watched the first episode, I was like, I was kind of keying in on uh, Homelander's uh, shoulder pads. And it was like, Ridiculous, those right? are simultaneously cool, but also a farce, you know? Totally a farce. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. literally like clumped on, you know, like. Sure. They're, they're very <laughs> exaggerated. It's very, you know, look at me. I'm right. It's a PR stunt. Yeah. Right, so that, that show was fun, although I had no idea it was gonna be the hit that it is. Mm. And when I started working on it, I read the scripts because I have to understand the characters. And I thought, oh no, I will never watch this show. My children will never, and they were in their <laughs> late teens. They will never watch this show because it read, it read so different. It read so like vile. You know, imagine reading the story of, of you know, what you sure. see on screen. Yeah. And um, I, Django and Chain was the same way. I read I read that script and thought, no, uh, so much torture. And and oh, then I started watching it because I thought, oh, you know, I better watch the show I work on. It, and and it was I think it's probably my favorite show of all time of all time. <laughs> it, the character development is just incredible. But it and was really I fun to work it, on them. 
it goes to show what a great contribution also the designers and visualizers make, right? You see something oh. just, you know, as soon as it's given a visual language, uh, it has a massive influence. Exactly. Yeah. If you had read the script, you would have been like, this is not going anywhere. Or, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Again, that whole team, what everybody brings to it, even, and the actors, I mean, yeah. oh my God, just the way he, the way he oh. is on screen. He's and I don't want to give away any spoilers for nobody, anybody who hasn't watched it yet, but it's far enough along. I think I can say that his arc in the show goes from kind of like, you know, okay, to he's terrifying. Terrifying. Because you realize like how dangerous are. someone with superpowers is if yeah. they're not, if they're not, you know, altruistic. Yeah. But don't you, does, don't you, doesn't your heart break for him at the same time? Oh, absolutely. No, there's great. <laughs> Excellent character development going on, I think. I think we would show. still date him. That's a good <laughs> <laughs> He's a, Homelander's a paradox. You know, the I poor guy. Right. Yeah. He's a he's a product of his environment. Um yeah, no, it's it's a cool show, and I think everybody should definitely watch it. Oh yeah. Um so someone's asking, are, are there any uh characters or costumes? Is there any any one or anything? that you haven't gotten to work on yet that you would love to work on? Any Marvel show. I, mm. I, I, cause I grew up reading X-Men and the New Mutants and all mm -hmm. of that. And so Marvel, literally anything that, that's Marvel. Um, I'm now, as you know, in the DC universe. Mm -hmm. And I can't leave it because I work with Laura Jean and she's my family and we work all the time and it's it's just such a happy place. It's like, why mm -hmm. would I leave? But Marvel is pie in the sky for me. I don't and I don't care what character it is. Though I might I might have to like say, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, oh. <laughs> well, that's okay. You you don't have to qualify your answer. But there's another cake over there that looks really good too. <laughs> sure, absolutely. No, I think that's all. That's also that goes. That's part of the for, the course for being a creative, right? Um, yeah. Because it's this. Oh, we're always. I think what I love about the creative process, if you don't mind the aside, is that we're never arriving. Yeah. We're always moving forward. We're always moving into a new horizon and kind of generating our sense of enjoyment and life and, you know, even income and, and things like that. Oh, one more. So mm -hmm. the designer I work with, Laura Jean, she was up for, and I think she got, she turned it down, uh, the new Star Wars. It was, it was a, a year or two ago. It was, it was, it was Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> sure. God. And she was like, no, I can't, I don't think I can do it. I'm like, okay. okay I can't do it. Why? Because it'll, it'll look like, where are you out and everything? No, we want you to be okay. You know, it's like, yeah, no. yeah. No. That's tough. <laughs> that was another thing. So Marvel or Star mm -hmm. Wars? Yeah, well, and it's cool, right? Because I think both of those franchises and including the DC universe as well, these are not just cool IPs and cool stories. These are the inspirations for so many artists, you know, yeah. Yeah. influence so many people to be creative. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, Okay, this is interesting, um, and I don't know how much of the question is in your wheelhouse, so feel free to feel free to say what you want to it. Um, but they're saying, "Hi, Gina. What are the main differences between designing costumes uh, for uh, games versus film? Uh, do you know anything about those differences there?" Yes. Well, I only know what I instinctively would know is in mm -hmm. games. Um, I've never worked in games, but in games, the clothing can move even if it's doesn't have to move it's like you don't have to put seams and you don't have to worry about armor right. and people lifting their arms up or anything it just does it because it's a cartoon mm -hmm. basically right mm -hmm. so but in costumes you have to have construction background you have to understand how clothes are put together and how armor's put together um otherwise you 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 can't you do your job well so mm -hmm. all you do is take like a couple classes it's no it's no big deal but um and also you have to understand fabric so in games you know he can be his whole body can be armor and he's walking just fine but but in in costumes you got to know where to put the soft fabric and and the hard and what bends and all of that so that's i think the big difference yeah there's so much more of a groundedness isn't there yes yeah. you're working with a real human something that's going to be in camera Right, and then we'll do illustrations uh, and we'll get a design completely approved 
and then we'll get the actor and their body won't be able to handle what we've created. Oh, okay. Like they could be super short waisted and we call it real mm -hmm. estate. So we have to give up a lot of real estate. So a lot yeah. of the fine lines will change between here and here. Mm -hmm. Because in the illustration, I got another four inches and then the actor came in and I got nothing. Yeah. Um, or the actor will come in and say, this happened recently, I can't show that part of my body. And we won't know until they walk in. And oh, like, okay. okay. So we're going to be covering up that part of your body. And then we just make changes on the fly like that. It, mm -hmm. And some of them are huge. Like, like if you think of, of a character that you know really well from the comic books that absolutely has arms that are, that are not covered. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the actor comes in and has an issue, whether right. it's mental or physical that they can't mm -hmm. show their arms or the actor has skinny arms and the character is bulky you know, from the comics, mm -hmm. you have to make those kind of changes. So some of those changes in design and that you see on screen and you're mad about it are because of real issues, you right. know, like the actor couldn't do it and that's who was cast. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's interesting. And that just happened recently where I had to completely rework a drawing and a design that had been approved all the way up because the actor wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, the whole new set of creative problems to solve yeah. when you're dealing with, is, with people. Again, and if you're like, oh, this is this is my baby. Oh, this, yeah. This this is perfect the way it is. Then, you know, forget it. Go do go be your it's own. Gonna work. There. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's too precious to you. Rip it yeah, in half. Um, be precious. I think uh, and this will kind of, I think, transis transition us into some of the final thoughts that, that we can get into. Um, we've got an artist asking, do you have any advice on how to market yourself as a freelance costume concept artist for someone who just recently graduated? Uh, I would call the Costume Designers Guild and, and ask them that question. It's mm -hmm. 892. Uh, talk to Suzanne, who is in charge of new members. She's absolutely lovely and will give you great advice. Um, to be a freelance artist, I when I was making the transition, I used Thumbtack, but I know there's a lot of other online resources for, uh, you, you build a little portfol a portfolio and you can bid on jobs. Um, but otherwise you need to be part of a union. So it's, mm -hmm. it's actually, if, if I was just getting out of school, I'd call the guild, I'd find out how to get into the union as an illustrator, which is not that hard, just so you know. Um, it's, it's hard. It's not hard to get into the guild, but, and it's also easy to get work, but you have to put in the work to be able to get the work. You know what I mean? It just doesn't, it doesn't just, it doesn't get given to you. You have to invest. Mm -hmm. So um, I would do that. I would get into the guild because you, you have to be part of a union to be able to work in film. And, and a lot of them are really hard to get into. It's like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? It's like, wait, I need, I need credits to be able to get in the union, but how do I get credits if I'm not in the union? Um, I sent my res in the beginning, I sent my resume out to every designer I could find that was in originally we had variety in the back it showed all everything mm -hmm. that was in production. And so I, I found all the costume designers and I mailed them a resume and Ruth Carter was one of my first calls a year after I mailed my resume out. And wow. I started working on meteor man for uh, <clears throat> Robert Townsend meteor man. That was my first job with her, but I was in the guild. So I got in the guild between then. So mm -hmm. that's my advice. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so I think we're almost at time and I wanna be respectful of your time as well. Uh, I think some great closing thoughts and, I, and I'd like to ask this of all of our guests. Um, thinking of, I'm, I want you to picture a, a couple different kinds of you know, artists getting started out. One might be someone who's a junior or senior in high school Mm -hmm. uh, that's either already aware of industry careers or, or what you're doing, or maybe this might be the first time they're seeing an option like this. Mm -hmm. um, or think, or fast forward and think of uh, perhaps a community college student uh, who may know a little bit more about where they're headed, um, but they, they also are looking for ways to prepare themselves, right? So what advice would you have for younger artists on how to spend their time now while they're learning? What would be some priorities that you would uh, direct them towards? 
um, getting involved in any place that if you know you want to be an artist, getting I, I volunteered to get when I when I had that ten year gap and I came back, nobody knew I was back, and mm. the only way I could sh make myself a, a, appear to everybody is mm -hmm. I volunteered you know, in, in, and I thought I'll volunteer at comic con. So I was, I was specific about where I wanted to volunteer. Mm -hmm. because I knew kind of my trajectory and I needed to meet costume designers in superhero, that superhero world. Yeah. So I volunteered at comic con and then every year. And so I was part of a committee and we were meeting all the time. And so everybody started talking to me and knew me and I was meeting all the other people, you know, that were involved and other designers. And then I also answered phones at the office at the guild so that when people came in, they saw me. I was, it was, nothing was beneath me to do to get my foot back in the door. So I get, be around other artists, take every class you can take, uh, do everything you can do to be involved with other artists and, and donate your time, volunteer. Volunteer mm -hmm. at the museum. I don't, you know, just think outside the box. Absolutely. But also learn learn keep learning take classes that you think oh, i'm never gonna use this but well, you know like life drawing and mm -hmm. just take every class you can and also you meet a lot of people at school true fun. Yep. and make friends with your teachers mm -hmm. they're, they're doing something absolutely and yeah you brought it up would you say that even though you know 3d is the future and so much as everything's already moved onto a digital platform and all those things are happening why where is the the value still in making sure that you do things like study figure drawing with with paper and charcoal or whatever it is you're using. Yeah, you you can be you can know your digital stuff, but if you don't have your roots in um, uh, traditional, mm -hmm. um, you won't be as good as you could be. You you have you have to take anatomy, you have to take life drawing, and and you have you've got to do all that groundwork. Both. It's like it's like you know a structure under a home. You know, sure. you, mm -hmm. you have to have the groundwork to be able to be good at digital. Like just like I can't be a cost concept artist, costume concept artist, without knowing how to sew clothes. I mean, I sewed clothes for two years. It was mm -hmm. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was horrible. But I did it, and mm -hmm. I figured it out. I learned it. And I know how to do it. And I know all the seams. I know all the tucks. I know. I know what they're all called. I know what every sleeve is called. Um, I know about gores. It's, so it's it's you've got to have your foundation. Yeah. Awesome. And line quality. I mean, if you don't learn, oh, you don't take class just on line quality and value. Mm -hmm. You've got your drawings. No matter how great you are digitally, they're they're going to be dry. They're just going to mm -hmm. be flat. Yeah. At the end of the day, art is art, um, mm -hmm. and those principles will never change. Mm -hmm. um, Gina, thank you so much for giving your time today. It has been a delight to have you, to thank hear from you. you. Thank you for being so generous with your process and your stories. No problem. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, sorry that we couldn't get at every question in the chat. Um, we only have so much time, but um, you know, this is going to also, this has been recorded. It's going to be available on our YouTube uh, channel as well as our Twitch channel. Uh, if you want to go back and see any parts you might have missed, um, and just want to say thank you again to Gina. Thank you so much uh, for being with us today, for giving of your time, and uh, hope hopefully helping to share some some really important perspective uh, for aspiring artists, which is the hope of of this stream. So with that, guys, we're going to transition really quickly uh, to I'm going to share just a very brief uh, informational presentation about Nomen. Um, so you you heard everything that Gina has spoken to us about, uh, and you've heard that blend of the necessity to learn digital and 3D, as well as having a traditional foundation. And that's very much uh, how Nomen works. Even though we're teaching 3D and 3D animation and so forth, we are that needs to be founded on art. Nomen is an art school, essentially. And so I want to share with you just a little bit about that. Uh, so I've got a screen share that I'm going to put up. Um, to jump into the presentation. There we go. So just jumping into it, guys. Nomen is, as I mentioned earlier, a 3D art school. We're located in Hollywood, California, and we specialize in training artists for careers in animation, in film, and games. 
Uh, and for us, the emphasis is on the word careers. Uh, we are not just out there to teach skills and then say, now you go figure out how to turn those skills into a job. We, are, we exist to train industry artists. We see our mission as serving the industry by producing quality artists that are ready to go and start working in studio. Uh, so let's hear just a moment. I'm going to get the controls for my, my slides up and go in here. There we go. OK, so moving forward. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so we started back in 1997 uh, when learning software like Maya and, and 3D modeling and so forth and animation was relatively new. We were a place uh, started by an industry artist by the name of Alex Alvarez where other industry artists could go to learn how to do this stuff. And then over the years, because there was such a demand for places to learn these skill sets, uh, we quickly and rapidly grew into being a full-blown college. Uh, as you can see here, we've won some fa fantastic awards over the years. And all of this is essentially to show you that, number one, we've been around for a very long time. And we're very good at what we do. And because of that, we have uh, alumni, we've got graduates who are working on some really incredible projects. Um, you know, so this is just a sampling of some recent projects that all have had Nomen alumni working on. And these are many of uh, the uh, studios that you might be familiar with. This is in all of the studios, because a lot of the, the ones that a lot of people know who are regularly hiring uh, Nomen graduates. Uh, Nomen is a place that is known within the industry to look to uh, for the next wave of artists coming in uh, to work in studio. Um, every year we have a actual placement team, a placement department that brings upwards of 50 studios directly to the Noman campus just to look at Noman student artwork. And so that's why we are able to maintain a high industry placement rate. So um, these statistics here, um, let's see, 97%, that was in 2019, 97% of our graduates replacing in the industry after graduation. Uh, let's fast forward to a pandemic year in 2020. Even 94% uh, of our graduates were still placing in the industry. Um, and then you go back to 2018, we were at 100%. Uh, we've always maintained a placement rate within the high 90th percentile. And the reason for that is not only our curriculum, but the way that we train our students and the access that we give them to industry professionals and the fact that all of our instructors are working industry professionals. Um, so moving forward, uh, what is it that you're learning at Noman? Uh, Noman is a highly focused college. Um, it's as if you took a, you know the, the art department within a traditional um, art school and just took one aspect of the art department and blew it up into being a full-blown college and leveraged all resources towards that one discipline. And so for Nomen, that is called digital production. Uh, now, digital production is a catch-all phrase that includes the following skill sets. These are things like computer-based visual effects, character and creature design, uh, digital sculpting, character and creature animation, environment design, lighting and rendering, matte painting and compositing, game asset creation, game engines, production workflows, and world building. Um, now, you might be familiar with some of those skill sets. Some of them might be new to you. But every one of these translate into the following careers. Uh, so every one of the uh, sort of the, the titles that I'm putting up on the screen here each one of these is a unique step in the digital production pipeline, and every one of them is a career path unto itself. And uh, these aren't necessarily all of the roles and careers uh, in the digital production pipeline. This is most of them, but these are the ones that are the ones that most Noman graduates tend to find work in. Um, and there is a wide variety of roles represented here. So what I want to do is go through just four of these to show you examples of how, how different these roles can be and the great thing about that is then the production pipeline has room for lots of different kinds of artists, different kinds of people with different interests. So first, we're going to take a look at character artists. And uh, what a character artist does is exactly what the name implies. Uh, this is the person that is, in this case, sculpting in ZBrush. They are sculpting out a 3D model of what the character or creature is going to look like on screen. This is the actual model that's going to be appearing and being animated, whether you're watching a film uh, or playing a game or watching a television show. Um, this software is awesome because it allows you to use traditional sculpting techniques. And we actually do teach clay sculpture at Nomen um, as sort of a foundation to this sort of a workflow. But it lets you actually sculpt with virtual 3D clay. Um, and this was the software that Gina even mentioned earlier, that you know things, uh, even for uh, concept artists and illustrators, uh, is moving towards this kind of a platform because the flexibility that it provides. Next up are effects artists. 
And, um, you know, at Nilman, I like to affectionately say that these are the artists that get to sit in front of their computers and blow stuff up all day. <laughs> They're taking some of these really complex models, for instance, this space station here from uh, the film Gravity, uh, that artists have painstakingly spent hours and months and days and weeks, uh, you know, building, and then they get to blow it all up. Um, now, this is a form of, of 3D animation, but it's very different than, say, if you were animating a character or a creature. Uh, with a character, you'd, you're going in and moving individual limbs and facial muscles and so forth. But with uh, visual effects, you are moving countless uh, millions and millions of different moving pieces and particles. So what these artists are doing is they're actually using a combination of an inquisitive and creative mind, uh, creative problem solving and knowledge of software that creates physics simulations. It actually runs simulations that gets all these pieces to move in a way that appears as though it's exploding or that it's on fire or underwater or water splashing, you know, you name it. Um, if it exists in the physical world, we're doing it in visual effects. And if it doesn't exist in the physical world, we're also doing it in visual effects. So, um, you know, if a visual effects artist was a character in a D&D &D campaign, they probably would be the wizard. Um, these are the guys that are just pulling off the magic tricks. Um, and there's some really great artists out there. And if that sounds appealing to you, uh, this could be a great career path to you. Next up are compositors. And the compositors are more towards the end of the digital production pipeline. And that is because they are the ones um, receiving all of the different 3D models and animation and, and stuff like that from other artists, the different pieces for a scene like this, they're getting all of those and they are weaving them together into the final scene. So here you can see a tennis court in a background that are 3D models. The tennis players are uh, actors in front of green screens. Uh, the buildings and props in the foreground are models that have lighting put on them. They're then textured and painted. A final lighting pass is done, you know, to bring it all together. And you wind up with a beautiful scene like this. This is uh, an establishing shot from the film Wolf of Wall Street. And, um, you know, directors are using um, compositing and visual effects to create a lot of their establishing shots for storytelling these days because it saves a lot of time and money instead of having to go to a real location. Uh, get permits to film there, insurance, your whole film crew, your actors and kind of set it all up. Now they can take it to a VFX studio and say, this is what we need. And all the artists work together to create that. So the compositor is the one that kind of pulls off the magic trick of making it all believable. And um, if they do their jobs, the audience never knows uh, that this wasn't a real location. Um, so, you know, there's lots of artists out there that this sort of a thing is super interesting to them. Uh, the last one we're going to look at are pre-visualization artists. Uh, now, these are artists that are working with 3D models and 3D animation, and they are creating a moving storyboard of the film. So their role is to work closely with the director and the cinematographer to find out all the different shots and the kinds of uh, action that's going to be happening in the film. What is the story that's being told in each scene? And they get to go in. Uh, kind of like a director trapped in an animator's body, they get to go in and create these more simplified animations that communicate the story and and the tone and the mood. They get to decide. They get to you know set up how the camera is going to move through the scene and and how the moving parts are going to work together. Uh, and so that then becomes a a sketch, a thumbnail of the film that goes further down the pipeline that gives. A, a reference point for everyone else working on the project to make sure they're all working off of the same picture. So if you're interested in 3D and animation, but you're also a big picture thinker and a storyteller and working with a director and a cinematographer sounds cool to you, this is a great career path. And you know, good, uh, or good uh, previous artists are in demand in the industry. All right, so with just a few ideas of the different kinds of careers that are available, uh, let's talk about how Noman is training artists for those careers. So our academic offerings um, are, as you see here, again, we're a very focused school. Um, we don't have a bunch of different majors and, and stuff like that. These are set academic offerings, all focusing on digital production. So first up, you can see Noman has a uh, full four-year degree. We have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in digital production. Uh, we also have something called a certificate program, which uh, is a two-year program, but it's actually more advanced than our BFA. And that is because uh, it's typically utilized by artists who already have a degree and they want to come in and get some very specialized intensive training in two years and then go out and work in the industry. Uh, we also, then the two on the top there are the ones that require an admissions process, a portfolio submission, um, and admissions into the program. But on the bottom row here, uh, these are uh, available for people to uh, enroll in. 
uh, without having to submit a portfolio. And the first is our foundation in art and design. And that essentially is a portfolio building course at Nomen. Uh, and over here, you can see that we also offer, in, offer individual courses uh, that you can just take a la carte. Uh, some, some are on evenings and weekends, others, others are during the day, and you can choose from some specific disciplines that you're interested in learning. Um, and I should say, by the way, that throughout the pandemic, um, we haven't missed a beat. We moved all of our programs and individual classes over to our custom-built online platform. We've been having great success with students uh, getting the same effective training and learning on our online platform graduating students, they're placing in the industry during the pandemic, but we're very excited that in the fall we get to move back to campus again. Um, that being said, the summer term is open for enrollment and individual classes uh, can be signed up for, and those are going to be online. So um, if you are international or you reside in the state of California, you could sign up for an individual class during the summer term and take that uh, at distance. So if you're not in the LA area, if you're not in Hollywood, say you're up in the Bay Area or another part of California, this could be an option for you if you wanted to take an individual class at Nomen. So moving forward, uh, let's take a closer look at our Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. Uh, this is fully accredited. Uh, again, it is a, a, a full college degree. And um, you know because of that uh, accreditation, financial aid is also available. And we have a wealth of information about the types of financial aid that are gonna be available. Our admissions team can help out with that. Uh, this uh, program is going to be very much full-time and on our campus. Uh, and uh, it has an optional concentration in two different areas. Uh, it's not required that you pick an, a concentration, but these are available as you're going through the Bachelor of Fine Arts program, you could choose a concentration in game art, which is going to take all of the pipeline disciplines that you're learning in 3D and teach you how to do them specifically for game engines, uh, which is what a game studio is gonna require for a modeler or a, an animator or a lighting and texturing artist to know how to do that within a game engine uh, like Unreal uh, in a game studio. Another, the other concentration that's available is our VFX concentration. And this is a new um, concentration that's available to the BFA. Uh, we started it in 2020. And what it does is it, is it allows students that are going through our, our degree program to uh, get access to some of the more advanced visual effects classes that were previously only available in the two-year certificate program. So if you are looking for uh, a school that you can get a degree, that you can also develop the skills and soft skills to be industry ready and have a focus on uh, being a visual effects artist, this is a great way for you to go. Um, now, everyone who goes through uh, our four-year program is going to learn the entire pipeline. It's what we call a 3D generalist skill set. So you are going to learn how to do every step. Why is that important? Um, it provides ar the artists that graduate from Nomen a broad foundation to do exactly what Gina was talking about earlier, is to understand the team that you're working with. And that's the reason why uh, many studios are looking to Nomen graduates to hire as their incoming artists because they know that they're not just getting a lighting artist or an animator or a modeler um, or, and so forth. They're getting that artist, but they also understand the rest of the pipeline and are going to be an incredibly valuable asset to the studio. Um, and it opens up a lot more doors and career options for you having that knowledge. So you get that strong 3D generalist foundation. And then on top of that, you get to pick out four electives in your last um, in your last year in the program. And so that then lets you build on top of that foundation a particular area of interest. So you really get the best of both worlds from generalization to something more specific to pull together your, your skill sets, develop your demo reel and get out there and start working. Um, now the bachelor's degree at Nomen uh, allows you to apply in not only the fall, but also the winter, the spring and the summer. So there's a rolling admissions. And that means we have classes graduating four times out of the year. And most students at Nomen just stay on for the summer term each year that they're at Nomen, which allows them to finish the program in just three years instead of four. Uh, so they can get out there and get working that much faster. Um, just briefly mentioning the certificate program, as I said, this is going to be more advanced than our four-year program. Um, it is a little bit more akin to post-grad level type of study. It's a little bit more like uh, the pace and intensity of a master's program. Uh, although it is not a degree in and of itself, it is accredited. It's full-time on our campus, and it typically is utilized by uh, artists who may already have a degree from another institution, but want to come to Nomen to get that very specialized focused training in digital production. 
um, and you uh, are going to be learning the entire pipeline with the opportunity to choose one from five areas of uh, study. And that could be ranging from you know, uh, modeling and texturing to animation uh, to visual effects and so forth. Um, but this is a more intensive program. It's designed to build your foundational 3D skills. And then you choose an area of emphasized study for the remainder of your time. Uh, and in those two years, then launching out and placing in the industry. Um, I'll mention our foundation. And this is the one that I said is our portfolio building course. And this is designed for um, uh, applicants or prospective students who may still need to round out some of those foundational skills. Like uh, I was talking earlier uh, with Gina about, maybe you haven't had the opportunity to really study things like figure drawing or anatomy um, or visual composition. Um, and uh, you, know, you may be looking to apply to NOMA, but you may still need to round out those skills. And this is a great way to continue to provide access to being an applicant to Noman because you can then go into the foundation and uh, there's no portfolio submission required. This is a course for you to build your portfolio, learning from instructors at Noman. Uh, so this is gonna include classes like figure drawing, anatomy, uh, lighting, uh, value studies. And then you're gonna move into some really cool design classes like character design, creatures, vehicles and mechs and environments. Um, you don't have to stay in it for all four terms. It's designed for you to get in and get the classes that you need. And under the advisement of uh, one of our uh, admissions team, they're gonna help you to know when you're ready to apply to the full-time program. Uh, if you go through the foundation with a GPA of 3.2 or higher, you automatically get a $500 scholarship towards the Bachelor of Fine Arts program. And about half of the classes you take in the foundation also transfer in. So it's not just a completely separate like preparation time, it is a time of preparation, also giving you a kickstart towards, uh, you know, applying and and having some benefits in the in the uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts uh, degree program. So that is our foundation. Um, and lastly, as I mentioned, well over 70 of the classes that are, are part of our full-time programs are also available individually. You can sign up for the summer term today, um, and you can take uh, one of our individual classes uh, at distance online. And then as we open up in the fall, we'll be offering individual classes on campus again. Um, so definitely worth checking that out. And even if you're only interested in taking a single class at Noman, uh, which isn't gonna require a portfolio submission from you, you can still talk to our advisors and get uh, some recommended classes to start with, depending on where you're at. So our advisors are completely available to you. And with that, I want to um, kind of finish talking about our academics by sharing with you possibly one of the most important takeaways for you from this presentation. And that is our admissions advisors are going to be your best point of contact and your best friend at Nomen. Um, this is our, our, our admissions team. Uh, they are all accomplished artists themselves. And what they like to do is instead of being the final person you speak with before you apply, they wanna be the first person you speak with because what they'll do, excuse me, is they'll offer you coaching and feedback and mentoring to get ready to apply. So this is pre-application feedback on your artwork, works in progress. They'll help you know how you're gonna be able to best put together your portfolio presentation before you apply to the program. <clears throat> and uh, they'll be willing to go back and forth with you and help you grow and get ready. So if you're interested in that kind of a coaching process, again, it's available completely free. Um, as Just if you're considering Nomen, uh, they wanna have the opportunity to talk with you and help you know how, you know, how Nomen could be a good fit for your goals and then also help you uh, with some mentorship and coaching uh, to kind of get your portfolio together before you apply. Uh, so my colleague in the chat, who is one of our advisors, can share with you a link that's just gonna take you to, um, it's just a simple online contact card. If you fill that out, it's gonna give the necessary information to, to one of these four to reach out to you via email. Uh, we're not going to call you at dinner time for the rest of your life. We're not going to we're not going to try to sell your information. We're just going to use that to reach out a couple of times. Say, hey, we're here. If you'd like to hop on a Zoom call, if you'd like to uh, get some feedback or ask questions or share your artwork, um, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you do that, um, just pay attention to the spam folder in your email, just in case uh, your server relegates uh, the the Nomen URL uh, for our email. Uh, there, it does happen from time to time, so we want to make sure that you do hear from us. Um, but uh, yeah, Nomen is uh, very hands-on, very case-by-case, uh, -case, very individually oriented. We wanna make sure that we develop a relationship with every artist interested in applying to our school because we wanna make sure that whatever decision you make, it is the best decision for you and your goals. And we wanna be a resource. So please feel free to reach out. 
Um, lastly, I'll just mention uh, Noman Campus opening up in the fall. And if you want to know what the campus looks like, go back and watch the recording because at the beginning of this stream, we showed a fantastic uh, video reel of the Noman Campus and the unique spaces that it provides. Um, I will say that we are not a traditional college building. We're located on a production lot in Hollywood. We have nine uh, industry standard digital labs. That means you do not, if you're going to Noman, you do not have to purchase uh, a industry level computer or all of the software, all of that's going to be provided for in our labs that are open every day from about 9 a.m. to I think one in the morning. Uh, and again, as campus opens up in the fall, that's going to be available to our students. Uh, and that's going to be your lab, your place to work, to collaborate with your peers, to get to know the artists you're going to school with and produce the amazing work that's going to help you get your first job. Um, in addition to our labs, we've got some awesome lecture studios, a fantastic life drawing studio, sculpture lab, uh, as well as a soundstage where we host events, and our gallery, which is always open to the public, uh, where we feature some great industry shows, Noman student art, and so forth. Um, we run a lot of great events, including today's event. Uh, we're live streaming them. We want to build a community and a relationship with you. Um, even if you're not going to Noman, we want you to have an opportunity to benefit from the community and to learn. And so that's why we do our live streams. Um, all of these are available online. As we open up campus again in the fall, we'll be able to do on-site uh, events at our soundstage, which are always free to the public. You just have to simply uh, register through like an Eventbrite or something like that. And we'd love to see you uh, come out to the school. Um, these are just some examples of past events that we've done. But really with that, guys, I just want to say thank you for sticking around. Uh, for those of you that have uh, listened to the informational session, uh, it's been my pleasure to host Gina today, as well as to share with you about careers and training. Um, really, the most important thing to me is that you know we have an opportunity through these streams to make the pathway clear. Uh, we want artists to know the opportunities that are in front of them. And we want we want people who are interested in, in being an industry artist to know that um, you know it is possible to have a career and it is possible to train for that career and to get out there and get working and enjoy what you do. So with that, everyone, I want to say uh, we'd love to see you back here on the stream on Wednesday uh, where Josh Herman, uh, industry veteran, as well as Noman's chief creative officer, is going to be back for our art jam from uh, on Wednesdays from 2 in the afternoon to 5 in the evening. He's been working in ZBrush, kind of making a, a group of characters and their nemeses and, and doing some really cool stuff. Uh, so it's a chance for you to hang to see an artist, a uh, professional artist and their processes and to you know chat with them in the chat, ask questions and so forth. So stay creative, everybody, be safe. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back here again. Thanks, guys. I'm